Alright y'all, it's AGP here and it's Wednesday. So you know it's time for another, now this is my second video of the day. So if y'all want to see the first video, it's about the state of play tomorrow with Ghost of Tsushima, which is going to be featured in it tomorrow. And y'all know these are the two PlayStation exclusives that were coming up with, that are coming, we're coming up on very soon. Last of Us Part 2 comes out in a little bit over a month, about a month and five days. And Ghost of Tsushima comes out in two months and four days. So... Right now, we just gonna kind of react to this inside the story thing for Last of Us Part Two, and then we'll just talk about it. But you know, it's not, I mean, it's not gonna be too crazy. Now, let's do this. Rated M, blood and gore, intense violence, nudity, sexual content. I couldn't read it fast enough, but that was a given. Okay. For the Last of Us Part Two, we're hoping to create a story that makes a commentary about the cycle of violence and how acts can beget other acts and show violence all the different violence? aspects that can yeah, come sure. out of it. Not necessarily good or bad, just the different consequences of one's actions. I'm gonna find and I'm gonna kill every last one of them. Yeah, Ellie's on some next level junk in this, man. She ready to clap for her. I've heard a lot of people say uh, why make a sequel to The Last of Us? I didn't even hear, hear the full pitch of the game, but just like the outline of what Neil was wanting to do with this game, I realized, oh, this is something we have to make. This, you know, this isn't even an option. There's absolutely more to do here. There's always the fear that, you know, when you made something great, world. and you're gonna go back to it, you're gonna mess it up. You're gonna mess what made it so special. The test for us was like, can we come up with a story that could, one, stand on its own and be meaningful and have the weight the same kind of feeling we had when we uh, came upon the story for the first one. But also now yeah. because it's part two, it has to be additive. It has to take the first one to consideration that if you played both, then you get like a bigger narrative. The thing that Neil really yeah, cared about, they, the studio they really didn't cared have about, to make a is honoring two. Ellie and, one ended, but... and Joel specifically and their journey as characters. What is the honest next steps that they would take? What are the truest moves that we could see them do? The Last of Us 2 expands on the first game, both in the relationship between Ellie and Joel, the relationships that we see Ellie having, and just the greater world that we're in, and we see more of it. It's a genre yeah. story about this infection that we turns that. people into these crazy monster-like humanoids. The core of it is about these really intimate, intense relationships. At the start of the game, Ellie is 19. She is living in a safe, secure community. We're coming in, you know, 25 Jackson. years after the outbreak. Yeah, I remember the end of it. They and went back to Jackson where his brother was. As Ellie uh, live in Jackson, which is this kind of somewhat tranquil town it was kind in of this really messed set up, up this community. reality. She has real community now. She has people who love and care for her, willing to sacrifice for her. Joel is also very settled down. He's now part of a town. He's no longer a smuggler. Actually, the town relies on this guy that is a very capable killer, and that's something in these towns in this world he need. He's a for many of people. Dino, where are you? And then Jackson and Ellie are shaken by a violent event. It really changes Ellie's day-to-day -day life, and now just living is no longer enough. Like, there's these people that have wronged her, and she wants retribution. And you, as a player, are going to want retribution for what these people have done. And then you go off on this journey that leads you to Seattle, where now you're, like, stuck in the city that has these warring factions, and they're both fighting over the spoils of Seattle, and you're stuck there in the middle looking for this very specific group that has wronged you. And that's the concept of the story. And then it takes you on all sorts of twists and turns in Naughty Dog fashion. I know even within the studio, we've shit. had a lot of like yes, philosophical means, arguments like, about wow. some of the events and what happens in the game, and I think in this one might be more divisive than the first game in a very kind of exciting way that I think it raises those interesting philosophical questions and asks the players to interpret some of the material that's there and see where they stand on those questions. Yeah. June 19, 2020. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, it looks like there's a lot going on in The Last of Us Part 2, quite honestly. And I know a lot of people who may have been excited for the game have not been as excited because the spoilers are decided they didn't want to buy the game because maybe they didn't like the way the story 
looks like it's gonna take its turn. Um, I I mean I just so I just replayed the first one all over again. And it took me like a couple of days, maybe two two to two and a half days to beat it again, just to get ready for part two, which I pre-ordered already. But I mean I totally understand why people are kind of on edge but i feel as though you know it the best way to figure out because regardless of whether or not people may love the story or hate the way the story is going at the end of the day the project altogether is probably going to be a very complete and good project as far as i'm concerned because i think naughty dog usually if not always comes through i haven't played a naughty dog game that i thought was bad yet and they've been around for a while and they became some of my favorites just period uh so Looks like there's going to be a lot going on. I kind of guessed about that whole... I'm, my assumption is that Jackson gets attacked and they kill mad people. Or maybe they do attack her and kill all the people around her for different reasons. Maybe it's because they didn't get a cure for the virus from her. Maybe it's because they're avenging other people that Ellie and Joel may have killed in the first one. Like, Because half of that game, you're getting attacked by people who are mad at you about fighting people from earlier who are attacking you, it would be crazy if there was some plot twist, like her parents got involved, even though in the first one you don't hear anything about Ellie's parents originally, but who knows, maybe, maybe something crazy happened there, and, you know, they left, and maybe something happened there. There's a lot of ways that this story could go. Those of y'all who have seen the leaks will know more about that than I will, but even then, there's probably a lot more to the story than what was leaked, even if they are key points or plot points. But, you know, you know, Breakthrough was a big YouTuber, you know, was talking about how he feels like he's the only YouTube channel that still publicly supports Naughty Dog and Last of Us Part 2, and I'm here to say that he's not. I also support it. I think that's going to be a great game, and I like that they're including a lot of stuff that a lot of people may not necessarily love, but is fair. You know, it's fair to have female main character or somebody who has a different sexual orientation than the majority of us or you know something of that nature that's you know that's all good that means we all get some kind of representation to a point which is cool with me but i'm gonna catch y'all next time i right? don't forget to like comment and subscribe all right i'm gonna catch y'all later <laughs>